Now, the federal government has stepped up its battle with tobacco companies, slamming one for its attempt to circumvent new plain packaging laws. From October, all tobacco produced in Australia will have to be put in plain packaging with no branding. One company, Imperial, Imperial Tobacco, has now produced cigarette packs with the line it's what's on the inside that counts. The Health Minister, Tanya Plibersek, is not impressed. She joins me now from our Parliament House studio. Minister, welcome. What's your problem with this line from the tobacco companies? Well, it's just a last desperate attempt for them to use their branding to retain and attract new smokers. I think that the line, what's on the inside that counts, is, is just a sick joke. Um, it, it is what's on the inside that counts. What's in the inside of those packets are uh, a product that, if taken as intended by the manufacturer, kills half of its users. I think the other thing to say about this plain packaging, uh, you know, trickery in the lead up to plain packaging is that we had tobacco companies saying that they couldn't possibly change their printing processes in time for the deadline we gave them 1st of October. Absolutely couldn't do it. What they've managed to do is not only gear up for the 1st of October, but slip in a bit of sly advertising yeah. between, uh, can, between can you then stop, and now. Can you stop them doing it over the next couple of months? Uh, no. From no. the 1st of October, they'll have to adhere to that um, to the plain packaging rules that we've set out, and we will be policing them very, very strictly. And I suppose um, the good news is that, that these efforts show that the tobacco companies are very worried about our plain packaging measures, and they know that they'll work in the long run. Mm. So there won't be anything like this allowed after December. Oh, absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. From from the 1st of October, they have to change the the um, printing, uh, you know, uh, uh, the packets that they're producing. And from the 1st of December, shops will no longer be able to stock old stock. So we're actually giving shopkeepers a little bit of time to clear their old yeah. stock between when the printing changes and when, and when the rules about what you're able to sell change. Still on the subject of cigarettes, there's a report today in the West yep. Australian speculating the government is considering a 25% rise in tobacco excise, the price of cigarettes would rise to $20 a pack. Is that on the cards? Oh, well, you'd have to ask the Treasurer of that. that that's a, the, the budget's always been a, a matter for the Treasurer and I, I don't but, have but any the, knowledge of that. But you're the Health that. Minister. You'd be across any proposals like that if they were in train. No, no, absolutely not. That, that would be something that the Treasurer would consider and you'd have to talk to him about that. OK, well, just on the issue of the health cuts in Queensland today, that, that's one of our top stories. The Queensland Government is saying it, it has to save money to, to get the, the budget um, back on track. Uh, these jobs, um, 4,000 jobs to go, they, the Government is saying it will not affect frontline services. It's just nonsense. You cannot take 4,140 workers out of the Queensland health system and not affect frontline services. These are doctors, they're nurses, they're pathologists, they're dieticians, they're nutritionists, they're occupational therapists, they're physiotherapists. We've seen cuts to breast screen Queensland. We've seen um, the dismantling of the tuberculosis centre for control. Like, Drug-resistant TB is a real threat from Australia's north and they're cutting this. They're cutting flu vaccine for health staff. I mean, these cuts are deep, but they are to frontline services. They will affect the health of Queensland as you cannot make these cuts. We even heard a report that they're cutting councillors from one of the morgues in Queensland. And they, they are unspeakably savage cuts. Um, and I feel but terrible they, but for they those are cuts that the health government workers. is saying they had to make because of the financial mess left to them by the previous Labor government. Well, that's just a very convenient excuse, isn't it? I have had to make tough cuts myself as Health Minister. One of the first things I had to do when I came in as the new Health Minister was introduce the um, means testing of the rebate for private health insurance. And I did that, although it was a tough cut um, to argue for and to win, because I knew that that was going to cost $100 billion over the next 40 years if we didn't rein it in. Hard cut to make. I did it. But what you're seeing with these Queensland health cuts are cuts to frontline services. The health of Queenslanders will be affected by these cuts. They are very dangerous and very irresponsible cuts. You know, we're even seeing a cut to um, the uh, funding for fluoride in, in the water in Queensland, like the biggest single health improvement to the oral health of Australians in generations. They're actually winding that back as well. It, it, it's just unbelievable you've, what you've they're doing. You've described them as dangerous. In, in what way specifically are they dangerous? 
Well, if you cut doctors and nurses and pathologists from hospitals, you see worse patient outcomes. If you cut people from breast screen um, uh, services, you'll see fewer women um, being recalled for breast screening for mammograms. You'll see uh, areas where staff are not replaced when they're on leave, meaning fewer services provided. If you cut the flu vaccine from Queensland health staff, it doesn't just affect the health of the Queensland staff, it actually affects the health of patients as sick health workers, even before they know they're unwell, um, spread flu from patient to patient. If you cut tuberculosis control measures, I, I mean, you know, TB is actually a, a serious problem in the in the Torres Strait, PNG, and, and we do have cases of TB coming down into Queensland. These are serious cuts that will have very obvious effects. Mm. OK, your dental package is up in Parliament. You're yes. expecting those laws will pass quickly today. You've uh, reached an agreement with the Greens and the crossbenchers. Have there been any last-minute changes to that legislation to ensure it's going to pass through quickly? Well, the legislation that's been introduced today is the legislation establishing a children's dental scheme. Uh, I'm so pleased to be able to introduce this legislation and I'm confident that it will pass through the parliament. I, I anticipate actually a lot of people will want to speak on it, so I'm not sure exactly when it will pass, but it has had an enormous amount of support from the public and from my colleagues, including on the crossbenchers. Um, this is a great scheme. It will mean that kids from the age of two until they turn 18 will have a thousand bucks every two years of um, work that they can get done, um, preventive health work, checkups, fillings, cleanings, all that sort of stuff. These are 3.4 million children in families that are eligible for family tax benefit part A. So the, the uh, very large number of children over generations to come will benefit from this. This is a, a huge, huge change. OK, just finally and briefly, this is a little outside your portfolio, but you have spoken already on it this morning on radio, and that's the royalties issue in Queensland. What are the implications for the Queensland Government from this proposal in relation to royalties? Well, look, as you say, it's not my portfolio, but I can tell you that I read the newspapers as well, and we've got um, coal miners in Queensland saying that this will cost jobs too. So they're cutting jobs in the public service. They'll, they'll destroy jobs in the mining industry. Uh, I, I think it is a, a bit rich for Campbell Newman to be calling himself the friend of business and a actually be putting this impost on the, on the coal industry up there. Uh, we've heard from even his terrific friend Clive Palmer that has been such a supporter over the years. Even Clive Palmer thinks it's a bad idea.